afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, December 26, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern. All that you need, you can have. The universe, this universe, is a very magical place. It is designed to provide everything we need so that our bodies can relax into the divinity within us. And if you notice, all of your basic needs are already met. You have air to breathe, water to drink, food to eat, and a place to sleep and rest. You even have people who you could open your heart and arms up to embrace for a long, cozy, warm, healing hug. Everything you need, you already now have. Yet, your hungry ego adds on this extra layer of desire, which is like adding triple frosting onto your cake. This layer can be so enticing that it causes us to feel like we're, our needs are not met. The frosting can blind you from realizing you're not truly satisfied in this life. There is a big difference between your needs and desires. The difference lies in your level of attachment to your desire and your willingness to relax and be okay with the life you're already given. When you can live from this relaxed space, the universe just wants to give you more. It wants to fulfill all your dreams, fantasies, and desires and make you even happier than ever before. And yes, so what is the final outcome that you want to feel in this life? Is it possible for you to drop into that sensation right now? It's always so silly, the reasons why we suffer. It's time to really start loving you. I think a lot of times we don't realize how many forms of love comes in. You could say maybe a zillion. Be a light unto yourself. Hold fast to the truth. Look not for refuge to anyone besides what is inside yourself, Buddha. All around us is a hidden energy that holds the vibration of love. Now, we may not always see or feel it as our eyes have been blinded by distracting thoughts, desires, and limiting beliefs from our past. Yet this omnipresent energy is a container of the divine, and it is everywhere, within everyone and everything. We cannot even say that there is a particular source this greater love comes from because it is the source itself within all and is always found beneath every little thought and thing. It's only when you stop, look, listen, will your eyes open to this truth that you can know that pure love is the driving force behind everything. It's quite easy to separate this world into good and bad people, challenging and easy situations, bright or dark aspects, and black or white situations that are most obviously right or wrong. This level of perception takes no skill at all, for it is just the mind running the show, following the crowd, this dualistic path is a necessary stage on the path, yet be careful as it does not include nor incorporate 
our infinite spiritual nature. The black and white level of perception is like the kindergarten of awareness, where the mind is molded to the world's beliefs like superglue. It is entranced by the ego's seduction that life needs to be defined, clear-cut, and under complete control. What requires true mastery in life, however, is to go beyond duality and see how a divine play is behind it all. By opening our minds to perceive the synchronistic cosmic perfection behind all events, actions, and people, we no longer live in duality and have jumped to a higher level of education. This new school requires our being to be truly present and constantly curious about how everything, yes, everything, is an expression of love. Everything is an expression of love. Only when your eyes have been cleared from the mind swinging judgments between right and wrong can you know in your heart that every single action done on this earth is a form of love in a great disguise. So you might be thinking, which I'm sure many are, how can anger, rage, despair, hopelessness, or even violence be forms of love? Love is so divinely creative that it can appear in a zillion and one forms. Love under great pressure will come out in a very contracted format. The more the pressure is inside, the more profound the disguise is. Sometimes it's so hidden that you cannot imagine or believe it is a form of love. If you see betrayal in a relationship, the mind immediately says this is a, an act, this act is void of love and that his or her action was truly unloving. If we wish to evolve or evolve as human beings, we must take on a much bigger and more enlightened perspective. This contains the understanding that all harmful behavior is how contracted love spills out from inside a great pressure cooker. For example, a wife who loves her husband may get angry at him for something he did or did not do. Normally, she may be very calm and peaceful about it, yet if there is a financial pressure on her, an emotional disconnection, sexual tension, or mental limitation involved, she may only be able to communicate her love through this tightly contracted state. It's quite easy to recognize how love shows up as a couple in a long, warm, deep embrace and a tender kiss on the cheek. Yet, to see love is behind the words and actions of a victimized spouse or even an act of violence in this, on the streets, takes a very expansive heart, creative imagination, and the courage to peer through the eyes of our infinite soul. It is only through a truly cosmic perspective can we liberate ourselves from the dualistic prison of the perpetual judgment and know that love is always somewhere in there, showing itself in the greatest of disguises. Many of us have been taught to believe that fear is a lack of love. This is true in the dualistic world. Yet if you look deeper, there is a deeply eternal loving force behind them both, driving and creating both fear and love. This is the true source of love which is so vast, illuminated, always loving, wise and compassionate, that it not only allows fear, anger, and judgment to be expressed, but forgives it instantly. When fear and love are perceived as opposites, we tend to forget they are complementary energies that depend on each other to coexist. When we can let go of the mind, 
dropping control over our reality and accept this greater love is always hidden behind it all, we become truly free. We can let go of our daily struggle to change ourselves and others, spend our energy surrendering to a deeper place of peace inside. Everyone has their karma to work out, and our job is not to judge how that looks. Judgment only lowers our consciousness. When we practice this understanding that love is behind it all, we will find a profound resting place inside our hearts that is free from the critical mind. We will discover how we can be perpetually free from any experience of judgment, fear, or separation. This all-encompassing, all-allowing, big love container that permits the most wild and insane behaviors people have is what real love is all about. If we wish to find this real love, we won't be disappointed. Life becomes a constant enlightening joy ride when you embrace and live within this understanding. Whenever you realize that love is behind it all, allowing for all and playfully expressing itself and the most random variety of expressions, you can relax and find great peace inside. By simply accepting this bigger love is going to show up in the most unusual disguises to test our level of consciousness just so we can see where our eyes were still clouded by illusions from the past. We find that this is the universe's special way of loving us all just so that we awaken from the dream. You probably will experience some resistance to embracing this all-loving perspective, as it will feel like you're permanently moving to a foreign country. Just remember that this deeply eternal love approach to life is in no way going to serve as means to justify the cause of harmful actions upon others. It will only open our hearts, quiet our minds, and help us transcend the world of judgment and duality. This enlightening approach can only increase our consciousness. If we truly embody it, we're not going to create more excuses for being irresponsible with our lives or the thoughts that enter our minds. We will drop deeper inside where love always is and have gentle allowing thoughts towards ourselves and others. When we practice this understanding that all thoughts and actions in life stem from the greater source of love, we will no longer ever feel a lack or separation of love. When the fish in the ocean truly surrenders, It never feels separate again. On the enlightened path of embracing that love is everywhere, you'll notice you stop being so defensive and reactive and start becoming defenseless and responsible for the tremendous creative all-loving power inside you. Those moments when you normally would have felt personally attacked by some random comment, will all simply disappear. By knowing love is behind all actions, you have to step into your most empowered self and start living an outrageously amazing life. You ascend into higher states of joy and appreciation, which can only manifest the highest possible outcome. Surrendering to love is the highest path a human being can take. When our bodies and minds fully accept that love is everywhere, we will suddenly feel more relaxed. We will become deeply aware of the thoughts and actions 
that we are choosing in each moment and see that our souls are only capable of coming from the infinite source of love, no matter what the mind believes. This can be confusing to the mind, for the mind only knows duality. Yet, if you are conscious enough to embrace this all-inclusive, non-dual understanding, you can also become vulnerable enough to feel what it's like to have an infinite source of love beating within your heart all day long. This shift can be terrifying for the mind as it will need to break its habit of being in control and right about everything. Yet to embrace love and enlightenment is a much better deal in the long run. This is what takes, this is what it takes to graduate from this life and evolve to the highest level. To jumpstart this higher path right now, think about a certain situation with someone where you would bet your life on the fact that love was not present there. Then, acknowledge where you're still holding on to this pain, suffering, and judgment inside. Find where in your body you actually feel this pain and sit with it, breathing into it for as long as it takes until it changes. If you want to take back your power in this life, you must choose to change your perception of what happened. The moment you can allow any situation to be neither right nor wrong and drop your judgments about yourself and the other person, you will start to see the bigger picture and karmic play behind it all. Each challenging relationship, emotional encounter, and conversion you have had contains a greater soul purpose by knowing that love is always behind the scenes, playing out these different events and roles in our lives. We can find peace within and accept the, the deeper lesson our soul is wanting to learn. There is great wisdom found in secretly knowing this truth and applying the understanding that love is always here moving our breath, beating our hearts, listening beneath our minds, and running our entire show. So if you will, go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted, and I'm sure we all are, and the first thing, the first, first thing, is to relax the body. Now, we all know we're not the body. We are not the character, not the personality, not the name. We are the God within the body. So you look at the body from a different perspective. The body is a super powerful magnet. From the point of the baby body, where we enter and power it up, all the way through, we can look and see where all this stuff's coming in. And it's all thoughts. It's other people's thoughts. Now, we aren't consciously aware of that in the beginning. Maybe not even throughout the whole life. Because it's tricky. The mind and the ego is real tricky, real good at convincing us that all these thoughts are ours. You know, they attach our names to them and everything. It's just really difficult at times to actually believe that this is not my thought. This is someone else's thought. We're not talking about blame or anything. It's perception and understanding. So it's like we have millions of thoughts that fly by in the sky. And those thoughts are where we embrace them. We move energy into form of freedom and reality, and then we experience them. Do you imagine that, that these bodies that we enter are constantly absorbing 
everything, all thoughts, all occurrences, and they're being stored in our subconscious mind. It's a big room, so it can store a lot of stuff. You ever notice that that's why so many of us gear towards negativity? Because a lot of the thoughts are negative that we embrace. Now, it's not that that we are cognizant or consciously aware of it, but that you'll know immediately. Then someone may say, well, then how do I know that these, how, how do I know that when I, I have a thought, <coughs> excuse me, how do I know that I have a thought? How do I know it's mine? When you send it out, we generate thoughts and then we send them out to the universe all the time, 24 seven. So when you're sending the thought out, it is yours. But when the thought keeps coming in, all of us, that that, uh, chatter, that mind chatter, then you know it's not your thought. And it's real, it's real, real challenging sometimes because everything's connected to you. So it's really easy to convince you, well, this is your thought. And then you'll start to realize this is not my thought. Therefore, I'm not going to move it, create it move it into form and and experience it. It's not my thought. So this is where the body gets so tense and stressed. You ever been in a situation where you can't figure out why you feel irritable? You ever done that? Where you go, why am I feeling this way? I have no reason to feel this way. Because these thoughts are coming in that we embrace. And they're, you know, irritation or frustration or something. With 8 billion of us on this planet, that's not unusual. That's when you go into deep gratitude. Immediately. Surrender to deep gratitude. It'll eliminate that irritability. Might might not happen in a few seconds. You might have to do it for a few minutes. But it's always being in deep gratitude that checkpoints all of these irritable, stressful, incoming thoughts. When, we, when we're able to master that, then we can look at the body and say, there's no reason to carry these thoughts. Surrender, release them. Right. Now, I'll keep this one because this one's mine. I like this one. And these thoughts are great. But the rest of them, they can go. This way the body begins to relax. When you can keep your body in a relaxed state, naturally, and it isn't artificial, you'd be amazed on how you flow through this life, with this life, like the boat downstream, downstream thinking. Why in the heck would you ever fight the current? No reason to. And then you can feel the body get lighter as this stuff is dropped off. And it gets lighter and lighter. And you feel good. You're not, you don't really have, you know, any, uh, you know, worry, stress, fear thoughts. Because when you relax the body and you focus on your breath and you drop off all of these unnecessary attachments through other people's thoughts, you're in the now. The mind chatter's gone. The ego mind, subconscious mind, gone. And you're kind of in this beautiful void, and you look out and you see this storm raging all around you. I mean, it's not a little storm. It's a big storm. And it doesn't, you you can't tell if it's ever going to end. But you are in the center of the vortex. And it's absolutely pristine, quiet, peaceful. Now, a lot of us inadvertently will jump into that storm, lose ourselves. 
That's why focusing on the breath, moving into the now, will put you in that vortex, serene and peaceful. No mind chatter, none of that. So it's a choice. I don't think many of us would choose the storm. I think just about all of us would choose that beautiful vortex. We get curious, though, all of us sometimes, so we jump into that storm. And then we say, why did I do this? Holy cow, look at this. So that's where we have the daily struggle to change ourselves and others. But all the time, focusing on the breath, easy in through the nose, easy out through the mouth, you relax the body and move into the now, and you become a watcher of the ego mind, subconscious mind. You don't judge, you watch. This is how we learn to master them, by watching. As you should say, you can say, that's an ego, that's ego talking. That's mind talking. You'd be surprised as you pick it up, you'll be able to identify it better and better and better. You'll start to almost finitely, that's ego. You're not judging, you're just identifying. That's ego. I'm not going to, enter, I will not entertain that. I don't care to entertain that. So then it passes by. And the ego knows that. It knows that you start becoming aware. So it tries even harder to keep you under its control. And you feel it. You know the difference when you're in the now and you're somewhere else. Big difference. In the now is peaceful, serene, quiet. You're not your body and you know it. And you're just watching. You're watching everything. Taking it in. Now, it's important that we always understand, each of us, to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with ourselves at all times. And to be in 24-7 deep eternal gratitude. It's amazing what this will do in the event you choose to embrace it. This way, when you find yourself grabbing on to one of those clouds passing by in the sky that are not your thoughts and you wander off. And you say to yourself, that's no biggie. So I wandered off, I'll focus on my breath and I'll be in the now. Because the now is all we have. We don't have yesterday and we don't have tomorrow. It's never been designed that way. We create our future in the now. Everything is in the now. So see, this is an e it's a very easy way, all but challenging at times, to stay in the now. It's different. It's different for, for many people because they're so used to being where? In tomorrow or yesterday. They're used to being in those areas. They, to stay in the now is difficult for some because they don't understand it. Why, why would I just be in the now? I could go off here in the future. I go in the past and find out things. But we all know this, is that we don't know if we will leave these bodies tomorrow. We have no clue. So we savor every, <coughs> excuse me, second of the now. We're in deep gratitude of every moment in the now. We go with the flow. We have downstream thinking. <laughs> it's a, it's a, 
confidence through the heart mind that you have faith in the universe, you trust it 100%, you have faith in yourself, you trust you 100%, the God that you are. It's a knowing, say. It is an absolute knowing from the God that you are. Everything always works out in the best ways. Unless you stand in your own way and fight it. That's upstream thinking. So you'll know as the body relaxes and you're in the now and how to stay in the now. You look at the body, you relax, and you see these lights in it. There's seven lights going from the tailbone to the top of the head. All different colors, beautiful, vibrant, deeper than any color on this planet. And they're called chakras. And what's the definition of chakra is wheel. These are wheels of light. They're spiritual etheric energy. We, the gods that we are in these bodies, our spiritual etheric energy, omnipotently powerful. We flow through these wheels of light. And they're connected to all of our emotions, personality, character, all of our organs, blood flow, tissue, everything down to the quantum quark. So you can see as we discover who and what we are within the body, we then start to realize, why wouldn't I be able to heal the body? Why wouldn't you? The only thing that stops you is your ego mind and believing that you're the body and not the God. Eventually, the civilization will step to the point of understanding that it can heal the body in a blink of the eye. Some of us you know, we, we, we stand, we, we always have these paths. There's usually three paths. One on the left, one in the center, one on the right. One on the left is the past. One on the right is the future. One in the center is the now. And you can visualize it. These pads, the, the one in the center looks almost brand new. The one on the left is really used one on the right really use. And you see these paths and you see these trees, gold, golden, everything about them. They're all gold shimmering, leaves and everything. They have formed a canopy. Going straight down the center is this beautifully vibrant emerald green grass. And you're standing on a golden uh, pad, a circle. Now, a lot of us are going to the past. The past are moments that were in the now that are gone dead. And so, but we do go in the past. We reminisce. We have memories. And those memories we visit on occasion. And we savor them because they're fun. It's fun to, you know, kind of review things from your past. But some of us stay there. I don't believe it's conscious to consciously stay there. And I think it's unconscious. But they stay there so long that they bring that past into a future that doesn't exist. They create that future from that past, and they relive that past in that future. That's why a lot of people will say, no matter what we do, we always end up here. Others of us, not a certain jet from it. We'll go into a future that doesn't exist because remember the future is created in the now. So we go into this future and we always ask ourselves things. We always want to know things. But we're seeking outside of ourselves. We're seeking external authority. So we want something or someone to tell us when. When are we going to have this? When is this going to happen? When am I going to have enough money to enjoy my life? When am I going to be healthy enough to enjoy my life? When am I going to meet the one that I could spend the rest of my life with? All these things. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not negative. But it's because a lot of the times we don't know 
that it isn't out there, that it is in here, that all of our answers are within us. And all we got to do is identify and understand that and embrace it with our heart minds. Now we know that the soul, the gods that we are, enters these bodies, powers them up, everything goes online, and we're able to stay in these bodies and experience physical life. And all that goes with it. So the soul, the God that we are, is the heaven. Heaven isn't a place. Heaven is you each of us, the gods that we are. The body is earth, so we are literally heaven on earth, and we're consciously aware. And what does that mean? It means that we know that we are of and from the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of purest, purest, eternal love. We know it. We're consciously aware of it. That's a biggie. So every step we take, we create paradise. We shine our light, our God force love light energy, which emanates within these bodies. This is pure, deep, eternal love, of which we're consciously aware of that we are. And we shine this light 24-7 infinity, everywhere, 360 degrees, flooding all life, the highest supreme values in the universe. In this very now, we are doing. So if you were to take a starship off planet and go out there far enough so that you could see this, the entirety of the planet, you would see that it glowed. Not only that, you would see all the lights in the universe surrounding it would dim in comparison. So a God planet paradise that glows and no other light in the universe can come close to it. Eight billion gods, some awake, so I'm not still glowing the love that they are within these bodies. Now we also know, we may discover, some of us, that when we decide to leave these bodies, we will know where the light We will know we're the light. Why would we follow the light when we leave these bodies when we know we are the light? That's a biggie. We also know that parts of ourselves are asleep, the gods that we are. They will wake in due time. And then there's other parts of ourselves, the gods that we are, that are awake. And those are the parts that we learn from and interact with infinity. And those are the ones that, that come together, so to speak, in these meditations. This is all the light energy beings and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. This is the archangels, the cherubim, the seraphim, the archetypes. This is the ascended masters, Kuan Yin, Maitreya, Buddha, Lakshmi, Ganesh, Gaia, St. Germain, Christ, El Moria, Abundantia, Pell, Thoth, Yala, Yeshua. This is all of the inhabitants of inner earth, hollow earth, the garden beneath earth. 
all of our loved ones who have ascended out of body in this lifetime and all lifetimes that we have inhabited. All the off-worlders, the galactics, and the celestials. And the archangels, they're a civilization that vibrated a different frequency than we do. That's why we don't see them like we see each other. But they're always around. And at times we have conversation with them. We meet them. I'd be just somebody, just some stranger starts a conversation with you. And they're always sending the messages. And it's usually after you've had the interaction that you discover you just comes up and you say that was an angel. And you, you feel bliss. You could be walking down the street, a complete stranger is walking toward you, says something phenomenally nice, and you get this feeling in your heart and mind, that was an angel. And remember, the gods in their, in their bodies are no different than the gods in our bodies. We are all experiencing physical form. The form isn't the life. The God within it is the life. Now, there is a message that they've been conveying to us for eternity. And they deliver it in so many different ways. Not that we always get it, but at times we do. And it is, isn't it absolutely magna glorious to be alive in these bodies? And yes, it is. We take these bodies for granted. It's pretty normal for us to, because we're so used to being in them. And they're very enticing and seductive, because we're able to taste, touch, feel, laugh, cry, run, smile, breathe, see, I mean, there's so many phenomenal things that these bodies can do. But as the gods that we are, when we're not in physical form, we don't experience any of that. Zero. We're balls of cosmic energy, etheric spiritual energy. We, we don't touch, taste, feel, smell. You know, we don't take showers. We don't sit by fires, none of that. And so you imagine how much we have grown accustomed to taking for granted of being in these bodies when it's absolutely magical. Only when we leave them, we realize. And then we want to get back into one. Now they can surround us at any one time, tens of thousands, tens of millions, because of their vibrational frequency, they can hold a large number in a small area. And if you want them to, ask them. They'll be there in a the blink of the eye. And you'll be in bliss. Now, the uh, galactic celestial worlders, over a thousand species travel through the solar system every day, trillions throughout the universes every day. But there is this group, a small group that we're familiar with, the Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Andromedans, the Felines, the Reticuli, the Anunnaki, the Nords, the Greys, the Draco, the Reptilian, the Golden Pyramid, the Avion. Now this particular group has been assisting us in our evolution. Enlightenment. Ascension freeing ourselves from our own self-imposed bondage and our own self-imposed slavery. Now, the old light energy beings, this planet on it, ended above it, below it, taking on all kinds of different forms. Because of our eyes with these bodies, we don't see but 1% of what is. So the infrared light spectrum, the violet, the ultraviolet, 
all the different life spectrums. Now, we won't see, could they come in shapes, colors, sizes, forms, configurations that we don't see. But there is a small group that we are dependent on, part of it, dependent on. It's the fairies, the sprites, the elves, the gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls, the elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether, wood, the mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur. And all we, have, all we need to do, choose to do, is ask ourselves, can these bodies operate without water? No. Can they operate without air? No. What about no soil? Probably not. About wood? Probably not. What about fire? Probably not. We're all dependent in ways on each other in physical forms. Some not physical form. Now, the ascended masters, they have mastered physical form. They have ascended into physical. They have mastered physical. They have ascended out of physical. They hold pure consciousness, God form. We have ascended into physical. We are in the process of mastering physical. We are creating our experiences to perfect our creation. And all of us gathered here in the Googaplexes. One Googaplex fills this universe with not even one square inch of sacred space to spare. And we, all of us gods, parts of each other, and all that there is ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, gather. Consciously aware. For the liberation of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, and this now. In full compassion, non judgment, non ego, non negativity, stillness of mind, gentleness, kindness, generosity, humbleness. Bliss, joy, tranquility, benevolence, peace, prosperity, abundance. And we're all one, and we're all God, and we're all love. And our God force love light energy is in all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And it continues to intensify, and it continues to grow and expand. We immediately form a circle of light around the equator of this planet Earth, Gaia, Arya, in this now. This light emanates from the God force love light energy within each and every single one of us. Pure, deep, eternal love, gratitude, peace. And it is flooding this planet and all life, the highest supreme value in the universe, non-stop, infinity. This is the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, and the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. It is the highest frequency. And it's liberating this planet from all lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. No matter what your ego mind tells you to believe. Now, this circle of light, this light is so bright that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. It would take a billion suns, a billion trillion suns, to even come close to its brightness. And we begin to ascend above the planet. As we do, we come into full contact with this massive ocean of glitter. And it's everywhere. And it's not just regular glitter. The best way to describe it is this, the, the part of it is this massive grand finale fireworks display and a massive laser light show display and a ballroom globe, mirror globe that we see in ballrooms that goes around, reflects the light. Except this, this one is a trillion times larger and a trillion times more intense. All that combined 
is this ocean of glitter, which we are in. And we're curious, so we go to the reflective points of this ocean of glitter. And we notice these little tiny microscopic, perfectly etched mirrors, so we enter them. And we discover that all of us and all that there is, ever has been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever, are teachers and students with each other. We're either teaching, learning, learning, teaching, or both. All of us. And when we start understanding that the physical forms that we witness on this planet, maybe in it, maybe above it and below it, the physical forms that we can see aren't life. It's the God within them that gives them life. And when the God leaves them, the physical form is no more. It usually disintegrates into nothing. So not just these bodies. We've all, we have all inhabited many different physical forms along our journey. We just don't have memory of it. Sometimes we do. It's once in a great while we do. And so people say, well, if I wanted to be a tree, could I be a tree? Absolutely. If I wanted to be a bear, could I be a bear? Yes. If I wanted to be a blade of grass? Yes. We have a tremendous, creative, all-loving power inside each and every one of us. Not the body. And that power is funneled through the body and out towards everything and anything. We're immediately met by the emerald healing flaming light, emerald green flaming healing light of Archangel Raphael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our power to heal. We are then met with the violet blue purple flaming light of Archangel Michael. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all of our omnipotent power, strength, and resolve. Then we're met with the white fire. This is a column of light that we created to remind us all that from head to toe inside now, we are imbued with the white fire armor. It is impenetrable. It is of the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest deepest, and the purest of the purest purest, eternal love. Cannot be breached. No lower dark matter, survival matter frequency can come near. No demon possession, no attachments. Nothing can harm us at that high level of vibrational frequency, which is the love that we are. Yet, only you, only you, only you have the power that if you decide to lower your vibrational frequency low enough, whether consciously or unconsciously, through hatred, greed, anger, fear, envy, hurry, Revenge, you will create a breach in your white fire armor, enough so to allow all lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies to come flooding in. And there's a lot of possibilities. Possibilities of attachments and demon possession and many different things with all the lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies. Now, if you do decide to do this, you're immediately met with a double column of light, the first part of that column of light we created to remind each and every single one of us is the purple transmuting flame. We can bring in the purple, purple transmuting flame. We can transmute all of these lower dark matter survival matter frequencies into neutralized substance, sending them to pure consciousness where they are no more. And the other half of this column of light we created to remind us all that is the violet ray. We can bring in the violet ray. We can cleanse and purify the area where these lower dark matter, survival matter frequencies were, sealing the breach in our white fire armor, 
restoring our vibrational harmony to the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, then the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, peace. We are then met with the golden white pink light. This is the column of light that we all created to remind ourselves of the gods that we are in these bodies, that we are the sun, the sunlight, the sun sets and the sun rises, the rain and the rainbows, the clouds in the sky, the trees in the forest, the soils, the animals, the oceans, the rivers, the lakes, the streams. We are everything. Everything is us. So the next time that you do view a sunset or a sunrise, a starlit night sky, a mountain view, an ocean view, a snowfall, a rainfall, it is you. Always has been. Always will be ever beyond and forever. Instead of looking at it like most of us and saying, isn't that beautiful? We realize that that is the God that I am. That's through the heart mind, not the ego mind, not the head. That is the God that I am. We continue to ascend above the planet. Some of us step outside our physical form and hover effortlessly above it, if we're carrying physical form. We do it because it's fun. We come into full contact with this massive crystalline light tower. It's larger than the solar system. We created it and beyond. In the center of the column is a oblong sphere. In the center of the sphere is a golden white bowl of light. It is surrounded by numerous multicolored lights that seem to go on throughout infinity. And they're all creating this super white, misty, cloudy, electrified, glittering, and absorbs in through our hearts, our heart minds, and like a warm embrace that never ends. And we discover that the golden white bullet is the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal love. Then comes gratitude, then peace, then well-being, gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness, bliss, joy, peace, tranquility, benevolence, great prosperity, great abundance. And all of this, we discover, is but a reflection of the gods that we are inside these bodies. Now at the top of this tower, we designed it so the golden ocean can come cascading down 360 degrees, flooding us all 24-7 throughout infinity with this pure, deep, eternal love, endless. And we are drops of this golden ocean. We also hold the essence of this ocean. Golden ocean is the drops, drops are the golden ocean. And the only illusion is separation. We see our meditative sphere. It's that center circle. We all created this sphere going near four years ago. It holds over 1,700 of our meditations in perpetual motion. These meditations don't wane. They don't weaken. They don't disappear. They do the opposite. They intensify. They expand. And they grow. And you can dip into them anytime you desire through the heart mind. Anytime. Our minds will most likely get crazier the more we meditate. This is an illusion. We are simply becoming more aware of the chaos that is already present in it. We cannot stand the amount of mind chatter. 
if, if we cannot stand the amount of mind chatter, take a few minutes before you sit to relax your body. Start by imagining a warm, relaxing light going into your toes and then moving all the way up your body. I'll join you in the meditation and return to close the sound.
take an easy breath in through the nose and an easy breath in, breath out through the mouth. Move easily and slowly. Be a light unto yourself. Hold fast to the truth. Look not for refuge to anyone besides what is inside yourself. Buddha. Take this with you for the rest of the day, into the evening and night, into the falling morning, and we'll return here Monday, December 27th, 2021, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call. Thank you.